In this section, we're going to start taking a look at a specific type of function, something called a unit step function. Then we're going to learn how to start working with it with respect to differential equations. So a unit step function is actually a really simplistic function. All it says is that the function is going to be the value 0 between 0 and some value a, and any other time it's just 1. Right? So basically, it's a piecewise function. And it's going to just kind of just have the value of one. So it's kind of like a flat line. And why do we even want this function? Well, what we can do is we can use it as a switch. And it's going to be used to turn on and off functions. OK, so you can clearly see that it has uses in electronics, um, in computer science as well, um, even in biology, et cetera. There's a lot of different um, applications of the unit step function. A special type of the unit step function is called the heavy side function. And I'm going to graph the heavy side function just as a basic example. Um, and this is where a is equal to zero. So in other words, we're not shifting it anywhere uh, for this. So what we're going to do is let's just graph the heavy side function to kind of get an idea of what it looks like. And then we're going to start graphing some of the other unit step functions. So the heavy side function is going to look like this. So it's going to have the value 0 for anything less than or equal to 0. So on our graph, it's going to look like this. OK, so it's going to follow. And there's going to be an open circle at the origin, OK, because notice it's just less than, but not less than or equal to. And it's going to have a closed dot right here at 1. And it's just going to keep doing this, right? So that's our heavy side function, OK? So you can think of it, and this is the origin 0 as you can think of it off here and on here. Now, let's take a look and see um, some examples of the heavy side function, or excuse me, the unit step function. So we want to graph u, the unit step function of t minus 1. Right? So basically, all we're going to do is we're just going to shift this graph one unit to the right. Okay? So if we do that, um, let's shift it out. So um, we're going to take a look, and here's our graph. And now we're going to kind of have like this asymptote right here at 1, right? So it's going to have an open circle at 1. And I'm going to try to mix up the colors again. And we just have this graph. And then at the y value 1, there's going to be a closed circle. And it's going to go this way, right? So here it's on, and over here it is off. And you could imagine if this is like a time t, right? Uh, we could say, okay, well, maybe I want to turn it on in one second or one minute or something like that. So what if we wanted to subtract the unit step functions, okay, or um, some variant of that? So in this example, we have shifted over by one to the right and then minus shifted over by three to the right. right? So what's this function going to look like? Well, it's going to take a look like this. So here's our graph. Right? Um, and for u of t minus 1, we're going to have this sort of graph, right? And here's our 1. And we have an open circle here. And there's going to be a closed circle right here. And an open circle until we get to 3, right? Now, notice the value is 1 between. 0, or excuse me, it's between 1 and infinity. And the value of this is negative 1 between, since it's a minus, between 3 and infinity. All right, so if we just have 1 minus 1, that's going to be 0 for the rest of the time. All right, so we're going to put a closed circle here, and it's going to do this sort of thing. All right, so. That's our unit step function, OK? When we subtract 2, all it's really doing is it's just saying, OK, 1 minus 1 is going to be 0, and this is what we end up with. Now, what if we multiply an existing function that we know the graph of by the unit step function? So what this means is that the value is 0 until 3, right? And then, it, and then from 3 to infinity, Right? The value is equal to 1. So basically, anything before 3, it's going to be 0. And then after that, it's 1 times sum. 
right? So the way we can think of this function in terms of a piecewise function is we can think of it as zero when t is going to be less than three. And we can think of it as sine t when t is greater than or equal to three. And the reason that's being is if we go back up to the original definition, it's u of t minus a. So in other words, all we're doing is we're just filling in for a right here, right? And we're just shifting it over. So this function, until we get to three, is going to be zero, right? So it does this, and then we get to three, and there's an open circle. And then it starts having the behavior of the sine function, right? Now, um, some students might draw it like this, okay? So sine function looks like this and then that. But unfortunately, that's not correct, all right? Because it's not having the effect of the sine function. It's having the effect of the sine function starting at three. Right? So we're going to get rid of this. Okay. All right. And our graph. And we know that at pi, it just becomes inter it intersects. So it's going to start taking a look like one of these guys, all right? And it's going to just keep up that oscillatory behavior forever, all right? And so that's what our unit step function is going to look like multiplied by the sine function. What if we have the sine function minus u of t minus three, all right? Well, what that's going to do is it's just going to have the sine function forever. Now, notice this is the unit step function. It's just the sine function. Um, so that means anywhere from negative infinity up to this value, which is three, it's actually going to have negative sine of t. All right. So um, anywhere from three to infinity, it's actually going to be sine t minus sine t, which is equal to zero because we're subtracting those out. So um, if we graph this, then we're going to get something like this. So here's our graph. And everything up until 3, it's going to represent the sine function. Right? So we know that it does this sort of thing. And then it comes down. And right before we get to pi, right here at 3, we're going to have our open circle. And then right here, we're going to have our closed circle. It's just going to be this behavior. So we'll keep doing that. And of course, from before, it's just going to keep having its oscillatory sine behavior. Right? So, so notice what the unit step function does. It turns functions on and it turns functions off. Mm -hmm. Now, our last one that we have is let's go ahead and start to create some functions. Right? So, so one that we have is we have a particle. And the position of the path is p of t is equal to 3t squared plus 1. Um, and we want to create a function to fire the particle after three seconds. And then after six seconds, it's just going to follow the path of the origin, right? So, so in other words, if we were to graph this after three seconds, so it doesn't do anything. So it's just going to do this. It has a value of zero until we get to three. And then after three seconds, it's going to have this behavior, right? The 3t squared plus one, right? And then here at six seconds, it's again going to follow the path of the origin, right? So that's what we're looking at as a, as a graph here, right? So um, one way to think about this is to say that our function, let's say f at t, is going to be equal to the unit step function times t minus 3 times 3t three squared plus 1. And what that's going to do is it says, OK, well, I'm going to have 0, because notice that this starts at 0 until t is equal to 3. And then after that, it becomes 1. But at 6, we just want to cut that out. All right? So for us to cut that out, we're going to have to subtract that out. So this is going to be minus the unit step function at 6 times 3t squared plus 1. Right? So this is our function that we want. So again, acting like a switch at three seconds on, and then we can subtract it to turn the switch off at six seconds. Right? So that's the trick that we can use. Subtraction turns it off, and then positive is going to turn it on. 
Uh, let's say we have the voltage in a current after t seconds is given by the function v of t is equal to sine t. We want to create a function to turn on the voltage through one period when the output is positive. All right. So anytime we have we have a whole period and we want it to be positive. And so what might be helpful is for us to graph this and then to get an idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so we want one period, right? So this is what one period looks like, but we don't care about any of this. And we know that that's pi, right? So we want the sine function to basically run from zero to pi. Right? And an easy way to do this is to create a function f at t. So we're gonna go ahead and start the function. And we're just gonna start the function at sine t um, through one period when the output is positive. So we're just gonna say u of t, sine t, right? and what that's going to do is it's going to turn all of this off until we get to zero. And then what we want to do is we want to turn it off again when we hit the pi. So that's going to be u of t minus pi times sine t. Right? So that'll be our function to be able to work with this. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good overview as to how to work with the unit step function, the graphs, and then also how to create a unit step function from a graph. Um, in the next video, what I'll do briefly is I'll show you how to use technology to graph the unit step function.